Tuesday's trade deadline came and went without much disappointment. Before we get into that, drop a like and subscribe for daily sports content. But Matt, which uh, NFL trade caught your eye at the deadline? Which one do you think will end up being the most impactful? I mean, I really like the Claypool trade. And first of all, I asked for this trade deadline to be more NBA-like. And they did not disappoint. Thank you, NFL, for listening. Uh, this was probably the most entertaining one I've ever seen. I this believe it was like, a record. I believe yeah, it was for most was like eight trade trades, deadline yeah. trades. Yeah. It was crazy. Just was awesome. notification after notification. Love really it. making Schefter work for his money. <laughs> it definitely gave us uh, NBA But guys. I like Claypool. I like that trade because obviously the Bears had already been active uh, at the deadline, you know, trading some guys away. Yeah. They had an extra second round pick so they could go and throw one at Claypool. Right. And I think it makes sense because if you look at free agency, and I mean, we'll show you the list right now. It's not impressive as far as not wide receiver all. talent goes. Nobody even close to Claypool. Why not go get the guy now? Now you have two guys to really show Fields what he can do towards the end of the season, build some momentum, yes. address other issues with all that salary cap space, and then, you know, figure out, and then you're also not pressured into, like, you have to get a wide receiver exactly. in the draft. I think it was a smart move. Maybe you overpaid a little bit, but you also kept Claypool out of Green Bay. Yeah. Great move by the Bears. I mean, because what's the alternative? You know you need exactly. a receiver helping for the Bears. Like you said, you take a chance on drafting one, yeah. or you probably overpay for a mediocre wide receiver and free agency this offseason. Exactly. Season. It's like Alan Lazard is one of the best available. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I don't hate Lazard, but <laughs> I'd rather have Claypool at this point. No doubt about it. So this was a dope move. And I mean, Claypool is a talented player. He is. He's explosive as hell. He's still young. This man is 6'4", 240. Absolute tank. Somebody who is a vertical threat can go up and get the ball out of the air. It's a red zone threat as well. So this is exactly what this Bears offense needs. This is what Justin Fields needed. And, you know, obviously Josh Allen was pretty mediocre before Stefan Diggs arrived in Buffalo. Tua Tagovailoa was pretty much one of the most criticized quarterbacks in the NFL before the arrival of Tyreek Hill. And now, while I'm certainly not saying that Chase Claypool no, is on the level of Tyreek Hill and Stephon Diggs, again, Claypool is pretty damn good. Yeah. And he's in his prime. He's on a rookie contract as well. He's going to help unlock yep. Justin Fields' game. He's also going to help unlock Darnell Moody's exactly. game. Because was, Darnell Moody exactly was, was special yep. over 1,000 yards last season, now becoming the number one receiver in the Bears' offense after they traded away or let Allen Robinson walk. He struggled a little bit. I think I, I don't even pool, fully blame him because there's I don't just no other talent. Like, I don't either. It's be easy to just be like, yeah, go – Cover Take that him guy. out. Right. I, I mean, wh so, who's going to beat us? Equinemia St. Brown? <laughs> exactly. So Claypool is, I think, just a slam dunk. And, and even at that price, you know, mm -hmm. giving up your own second round pick. So I love Claypool's addition to Chicago Bears offense. But the move I was really impressed with, one that I think is going to have send ripples through the NFL, is the addition of Bradley Chubb to this Miami Dolphins roster, which is already, one. you know, one of the best. We know what this Dolphins offense is led by Tua, Cheetah, and, and Waddle. But, you know, defensively, you know, defensively, that's kind of been their strong point in seasons yeah. past. They've been kind of flying under the radar, playing, you know, probably beneath their expectations defensively this year. Mm -hmm. But Bradley Chubb is going to help. This team only has 15 sacks, I believe, through eight games. Bradley Chubb has about five and a half. You know, Jalen Phillips is currently their leading sack guy with, with three. And he's also another guy that I was high on last yeah, year, you if were. you remember, out yep, of the draft, absolutely. coming out of Miami, going to Miami Dolphins. And I think he's going to, you know, benefit from having Bradley Chubb on the other side. I think with the addition to Chubb, this is a Super Bowl team. I expect the Miami Dolphins at this point to play the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC title Ooh. game. You know, we know, again, what this Dolphins offense is offensively. You know, being able to rush four and still get home to guys like Mahomes, Allen, you know, Lamar Jackson as well. I think that's going to be huge. So Bradley Chubb. It's a big deal for me. I mean, it is a big deal. And, you know, interestingly, it really shows how good this Miami Dolphins front office has actually been. Even Man. through some of the even through some of the distractions, all this Tua stuff, which yeah. really shouldn't have been there because he should have been their quarterback from day one. But yep. you turn those three picks that you got from Trey Lance into, into Jalen Waddle, Bradley Chubb, and Tyreek Hill. Ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Not, I mean, that's got to be one of the biggest hauls exactly. in NFL history. Exactly. And it honestly, uh, I mean, aside from actually drafting Waddle, which was a great draft pick, right. but it shows that these NFL teams that almost have too high of a value on draft picks, look what you can do. If you go out and you spend, you right. can get guys like big name guys like Tyreek Hill, like Bradley Chubb, if you're willing to spend, and they are instant impact guys. Another fun fact that apparently has happened: uh, the last two of the last two teams to make trades with the Denver Broncos at him, the Matt. trade deadline. Talk to them. Emmanuel Sanders went to San Francisco. Yep. They go to the Super Bowl. Yep. And then obviously uh, the 
the uh, Rams. <laughs> Von Miller, trade, yeah, right? Trade yep. Von Miller. So yep, from the maybe, Broncos maybe too. Miami figured something out with trading with Denver because everybody who trades with Denver seems to do a lot better <laughs> than we think. No doubt about it. Another quiet move also on trade deadline day for the Miami Dolphins was adding Jeff Wilson, the familiar mm. face of Mike McDaniel yeah. after they traded away Chase Edmonds, getting another back to pair with Raheem Mostert in that backfield. Somebody, yep. again, who's familiar with that scheme and Jeff Wilson. I think that's another sneaky good pickup. I like the Dolphins, man. This is a big day. I expect them to be real players in the AFC playoffs. But let us know in the comments which trade of the trade deadline caught your eye the most. Don't forget to like and subscribe Love as well. Armstrong. Cowherd said it best. Watch out for Armstrong. You heard it. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.